Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I just wanted to have a chat about, well, what the title said, just pretty much uh, the state of Division 2, kind of its downfall since it came out just about a year ago, I mean, you know, a year and two months at this point, and just kind of the future of the franchise, because there's been a lot of talks about a potential Division 3, or, you know, some other just continue DLC, or maybe they just stop support on the Division franchise as a whole, so I want to have a discussion about that. Um, I'm not going to bow into the negativity, I mean, obviously... It's pretty rampant these days on social media and on a lot of YouTubers' videos. There's a ton of negativity surrounding the game, and I, you know, I don't feel that way about the game. I don't have super negative thoughts towards it, but I don't, and I'm not afraid to say that I think this game definitely turned out a lot worse than Division 1 has, and I don't think it's going to come back and surpass that before the end of its life. I just don't, personally. Um, but I just want to have a chat about that. And if you couldn't tell already, this is, uh, unscripted, unlike most of my videos. I just wanted to really have a, sit down and have a chat about it instead of me just, you know, talking at a quick pace and rambling on about stuff. There is going to be some rambling in this, and so I will definitely try to make it not super boring. Um, but we'll stick on topic. I just have some bullet points I want to go over about some of these topics. So, uh, sit back, relax, and, uh, hopefully we'll have a good time. Let's get into it. I want to just start with kind of a look at Division 2 as a whole, kind of how it went during year one and the current status that it's at. And I think the important place to start there is how I believe that Division 2 was kind of doomed from the start. I think we didn't know it at the time, like when we saw the reveal trailer in E3 in 2018. I mean, I watched that live with a lot of my friends who play Division, and we were all super excited. I mean, we couldn't, from seeing that trailer and from seeing the changes to the core gameplay, like with armor and all that kind of stuff, we couldn't have known that that was going to inherently make the game worse than Division 1 was, but I think when you look back on it now, it just kind of set itself up for failure from the start, and part of the reason I feel that way is, and this is tied to PvP, I guess, more specifically than PvE. I think if you just play PvE in both Division 1 and 2, you might like this game more just because there's more of an actual end game to farm and grind for, I feel like. That's just my opinion. I'm not a strictly PvE player, so I can't make that judgment, but I feel like, especially with Warlords, now there's like structure and you can play legendary missions or you can play raids. There's a lot of options, and overall, there's probably more build diversity. I think, I mean, classifieds, once they came out in Division 1, kind of killed build diversity in PvP for sure, but I think in PvE, if you wanted to be the most efficient, you had to use classifieds, and now in Div 2, it, I feel like there's a variety of different things you can use. There's obviously metas, that's true for both PvE and PvP, but I feel like in general, there's a lot more options that are viable and still you know, competitive in the PvE side of things. But I want to talk about, for me, what really doomed this game once we started playing it and seeing how it functioned. And this, like I said, this applies to PvP, but it also applies to the whole game, but more so for how my play style is. And those two things are the introduction of the armor system for players and the removal and lack of pretty much any burst healing in the game. I feel like those... Two things really set it back in terms of how I feel about it, because in PvP, <laughs> they can try to, this is how I feel about it, they can try as much as they want to force us to use cover and make it a cover-based shooter for PvP, but no matter how many restrictions you try to put on players, especially in this franchise where we had Division 1 and how that PvP was, people are always going to find a way to play out of cover. Now, it might not be successful all the time, it might not be super effective, but no matter how many restrictions you try and put on people, people are going to find a way to play out of cover because that's just the more competitive and exciting way to play, for me and for a lot of other PvP players. And so part of the reason why Division 2 just, in my opinion, will never surpass Division 1 is because we don't have burst heals, and so that means it all the... PvP is just slow and sluggish, and even when you're up close and fighting someone, you have to be in the radius of a healer hive in order to stay alive, unless you're in a meta now where you can just get some crazy armor and all that. I just, I don't know. There's just a lot of different factors that Division 2 brought to the table that's going to mean that it will never surpass Division 1, I don't think. In the PvP scene, like I said, I don't know about PvE, but for PvP, it's just never going to. And the armor system over health, it's, I don't really think the armor system itself is a problem because if there were burst deals that apply to your armor, well, then that would just kind of be solved. So I think burst deals is the bigger issue of why it's like that. But armor, having the combination of armor and health, it was more of a problem during year one where you just got beamed as soon as your armor was gone. Health is a little bit more buff now, but it's just kind of pointless. I don't see why they just add it to make it more realistic in terms of PvE. I mean, I don't really know why we needed the armor system, if you know what I mean, Ex unless they're trying to go for realism. And I just don't think in a game like this where you can walk up and shoot someone in the head with a 
massive LMG while you're carrying 100 pounds on you, realism is out the window. So I don't know why armor really mattered for them to bring in, but it's here. And since there are no burst deals, the combination of those two things just makes the experience a lot less fun for me. And getting back to the idea of the devs hindering the player experience to try and force a cover-based environment, part of the reason why Division 2 is a lot less fun for me than Division 1 was, I still enjoy Division 2 for certain aspects, but in terms of raw PvP, Division 1 is always going to be better at least than Division 2. I don't know about future entries in the franchise or whatever, but because you're forced to, I feel like when I'm playing Division 2, I'm not only enacting my skill to beat other players and beat the AI and all that, I feel like I'm having to fight these systems that the devs have implemented in order to perform at the level that I want to. I have to play around the lethality of the ads and everything when you're out of cover because I want to play that run and gun playstyle and I want to run around. And people can say, no, that's not what the game is designed to be, but then why do they add... <laughs> Why do they add things like the Lady Death where you get, you know, stacks for damage when you're running around? I mean, they they can't fully commit to cover based because they know that that's not, I don't know. I feel like in, in the modern day of gaming, you know, looter shooter, the cover based genre is not really applicable to that. And I think the cover system division is great. And I use it a lot in PvP as a, as a supplement to my own skill of not bunkering in cover, but just standing behind objects, blocking line of sight, getting my hits in. I just feel like if they were to commit to a more Division 1 style of gameplay where you can run around, you can strafe, you can pop your burst deals and work around timers, it just took a lot more skill than Division 2 did, does, honestly. And the fact that there's also heals over time just means you can drop a chem at your feet that's tier 6. This is just an example. I'm not saying people would actually do this. But then you just stand in your heal and fight while everyone is just healing up. It's just not... I don't know. It's just boring, honestly. I, I have fun in PvP at times when there's certain things that can get quick time to kills or you can finally put together a good build, but the systems that the devs have in place for the core gameplay I think is what hinders the game the most. I don't think there's any specific meta or gun or talents that makes the game inherently bad or not fun. I mean, certainly the metas aren't fun, but I think overall the core issues of why Division 2 is not as good as Division 1 fall in the fundamentals and the aspects of the game, which can never be fixed. Like, if you're being realistic, the devs are never going to go in and revert the armor system or add in burst heals. That's just not going to happen. And so that's why I kind of want to have this chat about Division 2 and possibly the future of the franchise, because I think if we want to see these drastic changes, it's going to have to come in a different game than Division 2. So that's one big factor of why I think Division 2 is kind of doomed from the start, um, just at least in the eyes of PvP players, because it was never going to be as accessible and as you know freely able to use as Division 1 was. But another big reason why Division 2, especially at this point in time, has, you know, quote unquote, failed. I mean, it has the, fra the player base is significantly reduced from what, you know, launch was, which is, is what happens in any game. But I think especially for Division and considering the negativity that's going around, Part of what attributed to that was the lack of commitment and content in year one. I understand that now that we look at it in hindsight, the devs were working on Warlords, which was obviously the biggest content update that we had to the game, that we have had to the game to date. But even that didn't add any meaningful content. And during year one, we didn't know that was coming. So what, we just thought that they had kind of already given up on the game? I mean, it was terribly... We were assuming that we didn't know that that was going to come because from the Division 1 post-launch DLC model, they were doing smaller expansions that were releasing, you know, content, you know, medium-sized um, medium content in those updates. And so when we had these different episodes in year one, most of us probably figured, okay, so there's going to be at least some meaningful content in those because that's the strategy that they went for before. Instead, they opted for the Destiny model, which is releasing a major expansion every year, except unlike Destiny, they didn't add anything in, in between. Destiny has seasons that actually have some content tied to them. I talked about this in another video, but Division seasons are just, and they didn't even have seasons during year one, so I'm not even going to mention that, but the episodes during year one just to add main missions, it's like this. In Division one, people complained about the post-launch content because it had no story inclusions, there were no main missions, there was no progression to the story that we kind of wanted resolution for since we had the kind of cliffhanger with Keener and all that. And so it's like they, when they were developing Division 2, they're like, huh, well, they wanted more story content in the DLC, so we'll just make it entirely story content. But then when you do that, and you don't add any game modes or replayable content, then there's nothing to do. So I think they missed the mark on both games. They really needed to come out with DLCs that had modes or at least some sort of new and replayable content, as well as story progression, because people want both sides of the thing. I would love a DLC that had both of those, but sadly during year one we didn't get that, and so there was really... N 
They had expeditions, which were trash, and no one liked those, and I still don't like them, and no one does. And so there was just nothing through all of year one. There was some PvP modes and maps and some main missions, and that was about it. And so then we get to February, and they announce Warlords, and everyone's excited about it. And that kind of brings us to where we are today. I think Warlords has definitely, in my opinion, there's no question that Warlords made the game better. Uh, a lot of people might get mad at me for saying that and start to bring some of that same negativity. But I think if you look at the game, its structure and how the, the amount of activities you can go in and play that are meaningful compared from TU7 or in year one to now, there's a lot more now. I mean, it's just you have legendary missions, you have all the different global settings you can do to tune the game to how you want to play. I mean, there's a lot more options. And whether or not you think that AI or 2OP or whatever, that's kind of irrelevant. But the game as a whole is definitely better now than it was during year one. But there's still no meaningful content. There's no, I mean, people said countless of times, there's no survival, there's no underground. And for PvP players, there's no last stand. Conflict kind of sucks. And so there's just still nothing there. And that's kind of where we are now. We have the raid to look forward to. And I think raids were a great addition to Division 2. But they're if they take them a year to make, then that's not sustainable. That's not a sustainable source of content for the game to thrive and survive on. And so that leads to the question of kind of why this video was brought up is everyone's, you know, talking about we have TU10 and we have we've been fixing bugs for the last three months now since this DLC launched. Is there going to be any more content after the raid and after all these bugs are finally fixed? Or is it just going to be seasons that write out the rest of this game's life cycle? And so that moves on to the next thing I wanted to talk about, which was an earnings report that Ubisoft had this last week, I believe. And they were looking at the um, 2019 to 2020 stats, and it said in this console life cycle, which I assume means from 2013 until now when the Series X and the PS5 is going to come out, that both Division 1 and Division 2 have sold 10 million copies total. And so that's a lot, undoubtedly, that's a lot. And so it means, at least to me, that shows that profitability isn't an issue for Division. As much as people want to say, oh, it's a dead game and it made no money, it, they sold 10 million copies. And so... It, it's kind of irrelevant how many people are playing now as compared to launch when they've made their money already, you know, and obviously a healthy game later on is healthier for the company and healthier for their image. But I think when you're purely looking at the statistics and the numbers, Ubisoft made their money back on it. They made it back on both Division 1 and Division 2. And so that brings up the question of what their next move will be, because one of the big things that myself and a lot of people in the community were mad about when Division 2, when the beta came around, was that all these same issues from Division 1 are still in Division 2. There's stuff like the double reload, and I mean, latency is more of a server issue, but stuff like different peaks on corners, and a lot of it is down to they're using the same engine from Division 1, at least I think. I'm not a technical person at all, so I could be completely wrong on this, but I think a lot of those issues come down to the fact that they're using the same engine, and a lot of the core aspects of what makes the division two or the division brands code is kind of was just kind of imported from division one and so the same issues those core issues to the game are still plaguing it and so in my mind that brings up the question of if they are going to make a division three or if it is something that they're considering would they want to really have a fresh start because they i think I would hope by now Ubisoft knows that if they want to make a third entry to the franchise, they're going to have to do a lot to win back the trust of all the people that they have forsaken during the duration of Division 2. A lot of people jumped ship and said some very harsh things. Some of it was um, was definitely justified towards Ubisoft. And so I think they know by now that if they want to put out another game, they're going to have to make some significant changes and show that to the consumers for it to have any chance of being profitable and for people to buy it. And so for me, that brings up the question of the partnership that Ubisoft has with Epic Games. But before I talk about that, let's just mention that this last week, Epic did a reveal, which was part of the Summer Games Fest, I believe, and they showed off the Unreal Engine 5, which is going to be coming out next year, uh, late 2021, I believe is the slated date. And it was gameplay that was running on a PS5 with this new engine of theirs, because currently Unreal Engine 4 is the top one that's out. But they are now working on Unreal Engine 5, and it was spectacular. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link it in the description, because it was pretty fantastic. If that's really what these next consoles can achieve, then I'm just incredibly hyped to, to get my hands on them. I'm definitely going to be pre-ordering the Series X as soon as it um, is available. But if you haven't seen that, then basically it's just, it's a massive improvement. And so coming back to the Ubisoft and Epic partnership, because Epic does produce Unreal Engine, if you were unaware of that, um, Division 2 is exclusively available on PC on the Epic Game Store, and it's also on the Ubisoft platform, but it's not on Steam. And so considering they have this partnership, and I don't know how feasible this is, I've seen some people talking about it, I don't know if Ubisoft would do this, 
But if they're making a new division, would they consider using Unreal Engine or, you know, some other type of engine? I think Unreal would be a pretty good one since they have that partnership. If they would consider using a brand new engine like this that has so many possibilities for not only graphical stuff, but just the new load times of the consoles and just everything, would they consider using that engine and that starting point to make a new game that could truly be great? It would be literally just a new hope for the franchise for them to push ahead of what Division 2 accomplished over Division 1. Because here's part of where the issue lies in my mind and why they could use a new engine to really spark a new hope for the franchise is that Division needs ingenuity. It needs some new innovation to thrive and survive. I mean, look at what Division 1... Obviously, Division 1 didn't have a previous game to live up to. You know, it had it was starting fresh. It had its own thing, but they created the Dark Zone. The Dark Zone is now so infamous in gaming i feel like i mean a lot of people who don't even who never even played division know what the dark zone is i mean it, cr it created a whole culture that other games have followed other games have tried to replicate and it was such a a risk that they took and it really i mean a lot of people hate it which is fine but it really paid off in my mind and in a lot of the community's minds even if they don't a lot of people who don't go in the dark zone respect that it's there and respect that's a cool idea i think it's it's the reason why i fell in love with division the reason why i'm still playing it today because the dark zone itself is so damn cool but Division 2, if you look at what Division 2 brought to the table, what did it bring that's new? We got raids. Okay, that's good. But it wasn't, that's not something new that Division created. A lot of other games have done raids. I still appreciated them, but not new. Just, there's literally nothing. There's invasions. Okay, cool. But that's not, that's not game changing. That's not changing to the whole industry that makes someone who hasn't played Division before be like, oh, I want to go and play Division 2 because they're bringing this really new idea to the table. Something that I've talked about with some of my friends is that if you saw the Watch Dogs 3 reveal back at 2018 z3 i believe or or 2019 probably one of those um watchdogs 3 is doing something really cool where you can as far as i understand it it's like you can almost play as any character you can recruit them to your team and just play as them just something like that is so fundamental and changing to the entire game that it made me even be like oh maybe i should go and try and play that that sounds pretty cool division 2 brought nothing like that to the table nothing and so I think if they want to do a third entry, and I really hope they are, I don't know if I said this yet, but I really hope that they, honestly, here's what I think. I would rather that they quit support on Division 2 other than the seasons and take two, three years, as long as they need to make a third Division game that's then sustainable and just incredible at launch and past that. I would much rather have that than to have them continue to try and salvage Div 2. Like when I said the issues fall under the core pillars of the game they're not going to be able to fix the armor stuff they're not going to be able to fix the burst seals they're not going to be able to fix the things that are holding division 2 back and so i think if they want to succeed and they want to have a real chance they should cut division 2 support keep the seasons going like they already have planned and then just work on division 3 for as long as they need for it to be good and for the consumers and the market to actually see that and so as for what kind of innovation that could mean for division to bring to the table there's a lot of things they could do i did a division 3 video back on christmas last year that was my my special video then and a lot of people like that a lot of people have given a really a lot of positive feedback on that video which i'm super appreciative of um i've had some different ideas since then my friend and i were just talking the other week about how you could even do some sort of like oh i want to say almost like cyberpunk division three where it's several years in the future when society is actually starting to be rebuilt and you know but it's still super unstable like even though we're living in a city the division have become like the police almost like they're governing all the different people and so but then you have these gangs that are super violent because everyone just lived through an apocalypse i mean everyone's still super violent of course and so there'd be these different gang wars going out on the streets maybe you have a cult that wants to bring back the green poison and my favorite idea from that was that the dark zone could be like there's not enough like prison space to hold all these people that are committing these crimes in this somewhat civilized environment. So they just toss all the criminals and people who have done wrong into the dark zone. And so then when you go in there, it's almost like, I don't want to say a sport, but you know, it's more for, it's less for survival and loot and more about like the thrill of it. And maybe you have to go and contain the riots that are happening in there. I don't know. Something like that. They need some leap because division two, even the setting in the story wasn't <laughs> I sh they should have known from the start that DC in the summer wasn't going to be as enticing as New York in the winter. So I'm not even saying that they're. I'm not even saying this new Division Three idea has to take place at some certain time of the year or in some city. It just needs to make some leap, either story wise or gameplay wise, for it to actually succeed. If we're talking gameplay, I think it definitely needs to embody some of what Division One did, where it's more freely. Um, 
drawn with movement. You know, you can actually strafe and do some of that stuff. I would definitely get rid of the armor system. Not really needed because we're not going for realism, like I said before. Definitely add burst heals. Definitely add that kind of stuff. I think there's aspects of Division 1 and Division 2 that both worked really well and were better than the other entry. And I think if they mesh those things together and brought some new fresh ideas to the game, you could actually have a super competitive looter shooter on the market that people would be interested in, even though Division 1 2 had shortcomings, they would just really have to prove themselves that this new entry could be something worthwhile. And I think if they do want to do that, they really need to have, like, I don't know, three or four betas, open betas, that people can come in and play and see that these bugs that have been in the game since 2016 are gone. Like, if they do use a new engine like Unreal, think about how graphically awesome that new game could be if they did use Unreal Engine and they got rid of all the bugs and Division was actually a smooth running game that had new ideas, that had something new to bring to the table that people wanted to play. It would be incredible. That's what I'm saying. I would rather they do that than spend their time trying to salvage Division 2, which just isn't going to come back at this point. I still enjoy Division 2. I still play it, but I am never going to think that it's better than Division 1. I'm never going to have the same kind of memories that I do from the Dark Zone in Division 1. And so that's what my whole point is here. I think that if this franchise wants to continue and to actually be successful and competitive, they need to have some big leap and idea like this. So I think I'm going to wrap it up, guys. That's probably the majority of what I have to say. Um, I hope I didn't miss any big topics, but I think I, I pretty much covered what I wanted to. Um, definitely talked about all of Division 2 stuff and what the future of the franchise could look like. And so I hope you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, obviously, I have a lot of passion for the game. I still do and always will. And so talking about stuff like this is just, you know, second nature. It's not going to not gonna go away anytime soon. So if you guys enjoyed this, be sure to tell me. Um, I have been considering doing some type of thing like this, like a weekly or every two weeks podcast that would maybe, maybe be capped to 30 minutes where we have like some central idea and then take some um, user questions from you guys who are supporters. So if you want to see something like that and you like kind of the format of this video, let me know. That would be super appreciated. And um, yeah, be sure to drop a like if you enjoyed and subscribe with notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. And I really hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts on any of these topics that I covered or anything else down below. And until the next one, guys, Rogue Gold, out. <laughs>